OK, uh, I'm going to explain Fourier series. And that I can't do in 10 minutes. It'll take two, maybe three sessions to see enough examples to really use the idea. Uh, let me uh, start with the, what we're looking for. We, we have a function. And we want to write it as a combination of cosines and sines. So those are our basis functions, the cosines and the sines. And the ans and the bns are the coefficients that we have to look for. That tells us how much of cosine nx is in the big function f of x. Notice that the cosines start at n equals 0, because cosine of 0 is 1. So that's a, a, there's an a0 in our sum. But there isn't a b0, because n equals 0, the sign would be 0, and we don't get anything there. So we're looking for the ans and bns. And really, I want to show you at the same time the complex form with coefficient cn. And, and now n goes from minus infinity to infinity. That's really the more beautiful form because there's a nice formula for Cn that one formula for Cn does the job. Whereas here I will need a separate formula for An and for Bn. OK. But so this is like uh, natural when the function is real. But in the end, and for the discrete Fourier transform and for the fast Fourier transform, the complex case will win. And of course, everybody sees that e to the i n x, by Euler's great formula, is a combination of cosine n x and sine n x. So I can use those, or I can use cosines and sines. OK. So how do you find these numbers? The key is orthogonality. So that's the first central idea here in Fourier series is the idea of orthogonality. Now, what does that mean? That means perpendicular. And for a vector and a second vector, we have an idea of what perpendicular means, a 90-degree angle between them. And we check that by the dot product or inner product, whichever name you like, uh, between the two vectors should be 0. OK, but here we have functions. So I have to say, like cosine functions. So here's one cosine, and here's a different cosine. So those are two different basis functions. Cosine of, and say, cosine of 7x and cosine of 12x. Would the, the coefficients a7 and a12 would tell us how much of cosine 7x is in the function. You see, we're dividing, separating the function into frequencies. We're looking at into pure oscillations, pure harmonics. And we expect, probably, that the lower harmonics, the smoother ones, cos x, cos 2x, cos 3x, have most of the energy. And the high harmonics, cosine 12x, cosine 100x, Probably that's, those are quickly alternating. Those, are, those contain noise and high frequency. Qu quick changes in the function will show up in the high frequencies. OK, but now, so what's the answer to th this integral? Cosine of 7x times cosine of 12x dx over the range minus pi to pi. The answer is orthogonality comes in. The answer is 0. That's the crucial fact. That's what makes it possible to separate out a7 and a12 and get hold of them. So let me show you how to do that. So, so I'm going to use this fact, which is the function version of 90 degree angle. So you see, it's a little like a dot product. A dot product would be. Uh, well, let me, let me remember. A dot product would be something like 
uh, C1 D1 plus C2 D2 equals zero. If I had a vector uh, C1 C2 and a vector D1 D2, that would be the dot product and it would be zero if the vectors are orthogonal. Here, instead of adding, I'm integrating because I have functions. So just, that's the meaning of dot product. The integral of one function times the other function gives zero. Okay, I'll use that now. Okay, how will I use this? I will look what I want. This is my goal. I'll multiply both sides by cosine kx. Multiply both sides of this equation by cosine kx. And then I'll integrate. And the beauty is that when I multiply by cosine kx and I integrate, everything goes to zero except what I want. The, by the way, all the signs times cosine kx integrate to zero. All the signs are orthogonal to all the cosines. And all the cosines will be orthogonal to all the other cosines. So I'm only going to get, let me show you what I get. So I multiply my f of x by cosine kx. And I integrate from minus pi to pi. OK, now on the right hand side, this is my big, my integral from minus pi to pi of my big sum of all these terms, 0 to infinity, a n cos n x, etc., including the signs, but I'm not even going to put them in because they're going to get killed by this integration, times cosine kx dx. All I did, all I did, was take the f of x equal that formula, multiplied both sides by cosine kx, and integrated. And now the orthogonality pays off, because this times this, when I integrate, gives 0, with one exception. When n equals k, when n equals k, then I do get the integral. The only term I get is a k cosine k x twice d x. Only k equal n survives this process. And then that integral of cosine squared happens to be pi. So this is just a k times pi. Look, I have discovered what a k is. I've discovered the, the k Fourier cosine coefficient. I just divide by pi. So can I just divide by pi to get this formula for a k? a k is 1 over pi, the integral from minus pi to pi of my function times cosine k x dx. That's the formula. That tells me the coefficient. And I could only do that with, with orthogonality to knock out all but one term. And now if I had, if I wanted the sine coefficients bk, it would be the same formula except that would be a sine. And if I wanted the complex coefficient ck, it turns out it would be the same formula except, well, maybe it's 2 pi there, 1 over 2 pi. And this becomes an e to the minus ikx. In that complex case, the complex conjugate e to the minus ikx shows up. So this is really the dot product, the inner product of the function with the cosine. OK, so uh, let me do some examples. I'll start with one. Maybe I should write up the the sine formula that I just mentioned. So bk is the integral 1 over pi, the integral of my function times sine kx dx. And there's one exception, one exception. a0 has a little bit different formula. a0 
the pi changes to 2 pi. I'm sorry about that. When k is 0, it's the integral of 1 from minus pi to pi, and I get 2 pi. So a0 is 1 over 2 pi, the integral of f of x times when k is 0, cosine, this is 1 dx. That, that has a simple meaning. That's the average of f of x. Right. OK. So all the, so the basis function was just 1 when k was 0. When k is 0, the function is, my cosine is just 1. And I get the integral of the function times 1 divided by 2 pi. Could we just do an example? So I want to take a function. And in this video, why don't I take an easy but very important function, the delta function. So I plan to use these formulas on the delta function. Let me draw a little picture of the delta function. I'm only going between minus pi and pi. And the delta function, as we know, is 0. It's infinite or at, at the spike and 0 again. The reason I wanted to draw it is that's an even function. That's a function which is symmetric between x and minus x. And in that case, in that case, there will be no signs. Sign functions are odd. The integral from minus pi to pi of an odd function gives 0. It's the odd, odd means that when you cross, the, cross x equals 0, you, take, you get minus the result for x greater than 0. So, so my point is this is an even function. Delta of x is the same as delta of minus x, and only cosines. Good. The sine coefficients automatically drop, are, are 0. So uh, of course, the integral would show it. but. We, we see it even before we integrate. OK, I'm ready for the delta function. So I'm going to write delta of x. And we remember what the delta function is, is a combination of cosines. OK, that's the delta function between minus pi and pi. OK. And what's our formula for the a n? Well, you remember we had a special formula for a 0, which was 1 over 2 pi times the integral from minus pi to pi of our function, which is delta, times the basis function, which n equals 0. The basis function is 1 dx. OK, we know the answer to that. We can integrate the delta function. The one key thing about the integral of the delta function is it's always 1 if we cross x equals 0, which we will. So that integral is 1, so I'm getting 1 over 2 pi. What about the other Fourier coefficients? So that's 1 over pi now, the integral from minus pi to pi of the delta of my function times cosine kx dx. You know what I'm doing. I'm using my formula to find the coefficients. My formula says take the function, whatever it is, and in this example, it's the delta function, multiply by the cosine, integrate, and divide by the factor pi. OK, well, of course, we can do that integral. Because when you integrate a delta function times some other function, you only get, you only get the act, all the action is at x equals 0. At x equals 0, this function is 1. And I don't care what it is elsewhere. It's just 1. So this is the same as integrating delta of x times 1, which gives us, oh, the integral of the delta function is 1. 
So this gives us a one, that integral is one. So I'm getting one over pi. Good. Okay. So now, uh, do you want me to just to write out the series for the delta function? It looks kind of unusual. Uh, this is telling us something quite remarkable. It's telling us that all, all these coefficients are the same. All the frequencies, all the harmonics are, there, are in the delta function in equal amounts, equal amounts. Usually we would see dr a big drop off of the coefficients a, k. But for the delta function, which is so singular, all a big spike at one point, there's no drop off and no decay in the coefficients. They're just constant. OK, so I'm saying that the delta function is the constant term, 1 over 2 pi, and then 1 over pi times cosine of x and cosine of 2x and so on. OK. All frequencies there are the same. Yeah. And uh, let me, I'll stop with that one example here. Because so the key points were orthogonality, the formulas for the, for the coefficients, and this example. Thank you.